Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Woodshop in Time. Now if you've been following our series, you know we've been talking a lot about dovetails lately. And I've been discussing it with my buddy Mitch Peacock over there in the UK. And Mitch does his dovetails a little bit different from mine. Let me explain. A dovetail is a joint that's very, very old and it's one of the best joints you can make for strength. So essentially what we have is we have a set of tails and we have a set of pins. And when you put the two together, it forms a joint that's incredibly tough because in one direction you cannot pull it apart. Now the difference between Mitch and myself, well, Mitch likes to cut his tails first and I like to cut the pins first. So we both decided to do a video to show you, the viewers, on how to do this. Now if you'd like to see Mitch's video, I have a link below there in the description that you can click on to watch it. Now I decided before I start showing you actually how to cut your dovetails that to help you, the viewer, get a really good precise fit well, there's a little bit of prep work, and that's going to be in preparing the stock for it. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have my pieces here, and I want to check them for being square as well as being flat. From there, I'm going to mark the outside of the boards. Now, why the outside? Well, I like to do the outside because I know for certain when this project's done, everything on the outside is going to get sanded perfectly smooth. So any pencil marks are going to go away. If it's the inside, sometimes I don't pay as much of attention or care to it, especially like on a drawer. So I don't want a whole bunch of heavy pencil marks on the inside that I got to get rid of. All right, so when it comes to just choosing what's the front or what's the inside and outside, what do we do? Do we just go by what looks good? Well, you could, but the key to being a very good woodworker is understanding the wood. Now, this applies to not just dovetails and drawers, but you can apply this to so many more things in woodworking, and that's understanding wood movement. So what I'll do is I'll take a look at the growth rings on the end. Let me show you here on this example. You can see I have a board here and you can see the growth rings on this. So this is the inside of the tree and this is the outside of the tree. Now the tendency with these rings are as the wood ages and dries, it wants to straighten out. In other words, this board is going to cup. So if I was to make, say, like a butt joint, let's just go with a very basic, basic joint. If I did a butt joint, well, you can see that I have a gap at the top and bottom. And again, as this ages, that gap's going to get bigger and bigger, and it's not going to be a very strong joint. However, if I was to do it on this side, it's going to keep getting tighter and tighter in that corner. And not only will that help keep it strong, but it also looks better, too, because you don't have those gaps. Now, dovetails are really strong because they do interlock together, but it's still a good practice to get into of checking the orientation of those growth rings. All right, so now let's continue laying out some marks on these boards. All right, so I have the outsides marked. Now what I want to establish is the front and back and left and right. So odds are that I'm probably not just going to be doing one little joint like this for practice. I'm going to be making something like a box, a carcass, drawers. And so what I'll do next is I'll stand them up and the ones that are going to be the sides, well I'll push them together and I'm going to put a triangle on them like so. Okay, and now I'll do the same with what's going to be my front and back. Okay. 
Now it's not a bad idea at this point to label in each of the corners. So I'll do like one, one, two, two, three, three, four, and four. I clearly have my size, front, back, and outers marked. And if, again, if I was doing like a series of drawers, I wouldn't want to mess these up. So I could go one step farther and mark all the tops of these A, and of course other drawers, B, C, D, and so on. All right, I have one more mark that I need to put on these boards. And let's look at the dovetail joint again. Again, assuming that I'm making a drawer here, I want to make sure I have the correct positioning of the pins and the tails. If I was to put this together, and this is a drawer, well, I want the drawer front to have the pins because as I'm pulling on that, it's going to wedge in tighter to the tails. However, if I made the tails the drawer front, well, there's a chance in time I could pull the drawer apart. So my front and back will be getting a P for pins, and the sides will get a T for tails. All right, all the marks are done on it, and the next thing I need to do is I have to measure the depth for how these will interlock together. And I'm going to do that with a marking gauge. So let me take a minute and talk to you about marking gauges. There's three types that are commonly out there. And the one that's probably like the oldest, most traditional is the one that would have a pin or a nail going through it. What this nail does is as I'm going with the grain, it makes a very clean mark on it. However, going across the grain, well, it kind of tears the fibers apart. Now, I don't know if you could see that, but you definitely could hear it. And so it does the job, but it's just certainly not a clean look. The next type that's out there is a marking gauge that has like a knife blade in it. And these work going great across the grain. A much cleaner mark. However, sometimes going with the grain, if you have a board that has a lot of grains changing in direction, what will happen is that knife will get into like a groove of the grain and it can actually sometimes pull the marking gauge away. So the one that I prefer is a marking gauge with what they call a cutting wheel on it. Now the wheel doesn't really spin, but it is just a circle. And what's nice about it is it works good going across the grain and it also works well going with the grain. So this is the one that I prefer to use the most. So let's come back to our boards. And I'm going to show you a couple of things about setting the marking gauge. All right, so now I'm ready to use the marking gauge to set the depth for what those pins and tails will be intersecting together. So with the marking gauge, I'm going to set it for the thickness of the board. Now I know that all four of these pieces are half inch thick because I ran it through my surface planer. And on the, the pins, the pin board, 
I'm just going to mark the outside and the inside. And normally I hold this down on the, the bench so it doesn't move, but so you guys can see it on camera here. Now for the tails, I have to mark not only the inside and outside, but the ends here. The reason I do that is, if you'll take a look here, on the pins, well, there's no reason to mark the, the edges because we're not going to cut anything. However, on the tails, you can see we have to make those cuts all the way around on it. Okay, so I could do that on all the pieces, all four pieces, marking each end. But what if, what if my drawer front, I decide is going to be a different thickness? Let's say that it's going to be much wider. Well, what you want to do here is you'll take the marking gauge, set it to the thickness of the drawer front, and then you mark that on the side pieces. That way they're going to intersect and then vice versa. I'm going to mark the thickness of the side piece and then you would lay that out on the front board. Alright, that's where we're going to stop for today on preparing our stock. On the next video in the series I'm going to explain to you the angles for the dovetails and what they mean, when to use them, as well as laying out the spacing for it. I'm going to show you two different methods to lay out the spacing for your pins for your dovetails. So until next time, if you like this, please like and subscribe. Join us each week. Follow us through on this little dovetail series. Plus on Mondays we have videos showing what you are doing in your woodworking. And of course on Wednesday we have our little shop update that we're doing as well as question and answers and a little mild tool review if you would call it that. So until next time, keep on dancing. <laughs>